Hi, um, so I'd like to introduce you to our new Zookan series, um, uh, Mastering E3 I believe it's going to be called. Um, so my name's Harry, um, so I am an application engineer in the UK sales team, um, covering quite a bit of the training within the UK and Northern Ireland. Um, and basically the idea behind these videos is to help create a, a, a database of um, videos for customers to be able to use and to further enhance their E3 experience. Okay, so this is for new and old customers. Um, so to start off with, we're going to do a series of four videos, which are going to be covering the design process from initial project setup, about placing components, then there's going to be a video about creating connections, placing wires, physical data around your parts, and then the final bit will be running your exports. This will be PDFs, um, reports and bill of materials and various other things. Now, throughout these videos, we hope to then create a community. Um, so, you know, basically we want to have feedback from you guys. We would like to hear if you have any questions and whether we can then create videos then for you. Okay, because very much we don't 100% know what we're doing with this. Um, so we would love it for it to be more customer driven. Um, so for now, I'm obviously going to take you through the first video, which is setting up a project within E3. So as you'll be able to see on my screen, I'm currently opened up E3 cable. Um, this could also be done in E3 schematic, E3 form board, whichever one you're going to use. But for this instance, we're just going to use E3 cable. So I've got a task, I'm going to move this out of the way a second so I can see my screen fully. Now to create a new project in E3, I would go to file and I would pick the option new. Now, to note to start this video as well, um, in E3, I'm sure you'll be covered in the training, um, there are about three or four different ways of doing just about anything. Um, so for the sake of simplicity, I'm just going to take you through the way that I personally would do it and the way that I show during my training courses. <laughs> So as we can see, I've opened up a project with an E3, and this has brought in one sheet, okay? Now when you open up these projects, they will open up in a project template, which is perhaps something we can discuss further in a later video. Now, first thing you might want to do when you're setting up a project, you might want to use a structure node. So what are structure nodes? Structure nodes allow us basically to control our exports and then to group data. So a structure node can then be based on perhaps a high level assignment or on a location. Um, and there are sets of pre-made ones in E3 and they're run from an XML file. So for this instance, I'm going to use a good example, which I would normally show, um, which is the one which we use for location. So if I just go and find the pre-made ones within E3, so they're found in this file location. So we go to our C drive, users, public, public documents, Dazookan, find your application instance, and then you go to your structure templates. And I'm going to use the function option here, which is IEC 81346. Now when I open that up, I will then load my structure node in. As we can see, I've now got a little star to show that has been loaded. Now what I do is, when I right click, I have the option to create a new sub-object. And within that, I can create an assignment or create a sheet. For this option, I'm going to choose an assignment. And for the, um, the sake of this, I'm going to create one called ENG, which stands for engine. Within structure node, you can also, if you set them with attributes, you can then show various things. This could be a part number associated with this high level assignment. If I press OK, I've now got one for engine. If I now go to a new sub-object on that, I can create a sheet, which lives then within this structure node. Within this sheet, I've got a name, high level assignment of engine, because that's what it is here, and the location, and I've got a format. So for this instance, I'm going to use a DIN A3. For you and your company, you may have your own sheet format set up. And then there's also different schematic types. So I've got options for form board, panel, and schematic, because I have licenses for all three. You may just have ones associated with your application. So I'm going to use schematic for now, and I'm going to press OK. OK, and as we can see, I have created a new sheet in my E3. If I want to do another one, I just go right click, new sub object, go to sheet, and then I can just create another one. Okay. And also with an E3, it's nice, everything is drag and drop. So if I just drag this sheet one onto ENG, I can also add it into there. Now, the next part of this, when you're doing your project, it's quite important to have a database set up. So with an E3, when we do a save, we save it as an E3S file, okay? And this file is independent of the E3 database, okay? So I could send my file to one of my colleagues, okay? And if they don't have the same database as me, there is no issue with that at all. You can also have multiple databases set up on a, a single E3 instance. So if I go to right click on my database and I go to select databases, as we can see, I can pick a series of ones which then can be loaded in and then projects can be placed from. Um, so then parts can be placed from your database. 
Now, we're also setting up stuff. As we can see, I've got my sheet border. And I've got a bunch of empty boxes down here. So if I zoom in, as we can see, I've got some areas to put some text. Within E3, in order to add text, I would go to my sheet properties. And in my sheet properties, I have a series of attributes and text templates, which are used to fill in this data. So an instance for a name too. I know perhaps this lives in this box because I, I've had a look at the, uh, the symbol in my database. If I then go to name two, and I set this to let's say be an electrical schematic, and I'm gonna try my best to spell it correct for the first time, which I don't do very pop often. Press OK. And that, as we can see, I've now added a piece of text to my sheet border. Now, perhaps you've got to the end of the project and you then want to do a change of text on all your sheets. You can do the same if you just select the sheets that you want to do, like so. Okay, right click, go to sheet properties. You can then change the text for all of those sheets associated with your selection. Now, in addition to this, when we're especially when we're first loading a P3, we might want to change our workspace environment. So all of these windows can be dragged and pulled into different locations. So let's say I wanted to put this on the bottom. I could then change, as we can see, if I move them around these handles, I could then set up my E3 as I like. I quite like it with the database window on the right-hand side. This is my project window, and then this is what I'm working on in the middle. And I quite useful to have the messages windows, as they can also have hyperlinks, which help you find parts in your device tree. If afterwards you've decided you like your setup, if you go right click on the top toolbar, you can go down to the option of customize. You can also then change your application look. Okay, so mine's currently set to dark gray because I am very cool and cool kids have their set to dark gray. <laughs> so if you the drop down, you can have different colorful, white, black, uh, gray, and blue. So very colorful options. Um, after that, we can also go to our view tab. When we go to workspace configuration, we could then save a new workspace, okay? So I save this, it will then save what my E3 looks like. I would highly recommend in doing so that every time you then set a new version, and then you can then keep your default. So then if you ever lose a tab or you have any issues, you can just revert back to your default and then change it from there. This is also quite useful if you're plugging your laptop, let's say, into a multiple monitor setup and you want to have E3 spread over multiple screens, you can then have a workspace configuration associated with that monitor setup. Um, so I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, this is taking you through the start of setting up a project with an E3 and hopefully then we will go into further areas in the future and I look forward to speaking to you again soon. So I'd just like to thank you for watching the video. If you have any questions or feedback on the video that has been delivered, please email the link down below. Um, and if you have any issues with your E3, there'll also be a link to the Zookin website where you'll be able to find out the contact details to the region which serves you. Thanks for watching and see you later. Bye-bye.